Yeah, well, it looks pretty big already. I mean, almost a fifth of China is under either almost total lockdown or, or partial and quite substantial lockdown. I mean, that's a, that's a meaningful piece of the world economy where, as of right now, nothing is happening. Uh, it's very hard to model this. There's nothing like it ever happened before. But we're already looking at Chinese GDP actually contracting potentially in the first quarter. And, yeah, probably there'll be a rebound. If the thing is over within a couple of months, there'll be a rebound in the second quarter. Great. But there will be some losses which are not recovered. Uh, probably more in the services sector than in the goods sector. You know, if you were going to buy the handbag, the deal bag, but you can't get to the store in January, maybe you'll go in, in March. But if you were going to eat out in a nice restaurant in January, do you then eat out twice in March to catch up for the, the, the one you missed sort of thing? So much more of a, of a hit uh, in, in the services sector and therefore more domestic. Now that, of course, all assumes that this thing doesn't become much more widespread in Europe and the US and, and other developed economies. That's a, a totally different ballgame. We're not at that point yet or anything like it. But I just want to stress that I think, you know, from a macro perspective, what's happened in China already, as of now, is meaningful. Uh, bear in mind that China's pretty much close with the lunar holidays at this time of year anyway, but even allowing for that, this, this is a real hit. And I, I don't know, you know, working out exactly where it's going to be is impossible at this point, but I don't think we should downplay it. You know, a, a fifth of a very, very big economy is pretty much stopped at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. And, and again, the, the, the societal cost, absolutely key, and people's health care is the, the most important thing about this. Is there an argument that actually Chinese capacity Chinese overcapacity was becoming evident, increased inventory levels was becoming evident, uh, reduced d uh, need for raw materials because of overcapacity and overproduction. Yeah. And actually, on an economic level, over the medium term, this will sort out some of those issues. Well, it might. I mean, it, we, we just don't know yet. I, mean, I, I think that before this all started, I was beginning to be a little bit more optimistic about China's cyclical position, which is kind of different from the structural story you were telling about overcapacity in the old guard manufacturing businesses. That is a, that's an ongoing, long-running problem. But from a cyclical perspective, it was beginning to look a little bit better. And we were kind of thinking, oh, the, the recovery we've all been waiting for is finally starting to, to happen. So uh, you're right that China does have an, an, a structural overcapacity problem in manufacturing. Um, and so you could regard this whole event as kind of a help to that. But that's not where the Chinese authorities are thinking at the moment. It's much more dealing Absolutely. with the crisis. Hi, I'm Joanna Bersetti, and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.